Salisbury grew by street and terrace as its middle class expanded, and our old infirmary sighed deep as Red Cross wards disbanded, only for accounts to come up short when so much needed doing. Wartime depredations brought this institution nearest ruin. But that war, that natal spirit, spurred a carnival eclectic, full week-long parades and pageants, matches, shows and concerts hectic, with a queen of noble mien whose calmness held the thing together, so a clinic for the ears nose throat was born, despite poor weather. Now, when we thinks of streets of housing in Salisbury nowadays, we often thinks of the Wall Street as a completed thing, like it were all raised up in one goal. But that weren't the case at all. Vises Road, for example, were built up with lots of little terraces, one after another, with little changes of style as they go, all on em built by what's called speculation, a view at a time. And Salisbury had been growing like that since the late Victorian times, mostly starting in about the Wilton and Vises roads and the railway stations. So there were Great Western Terrace, Windsor Street, the Quartet of Compass Roads by Jews Road, Girt Villas in Churchfields Road, and then come the Railway Town, York Road, St Paul's, Meadow or Church Road as it were called then, and Cold Arbour Lane. There were terraces by Skew Bridge and nice villas in Park Lane and Glenmore Road by about 1860. Then come the Fowlers and Elm Grove estates on the east side by about 1870, followed by Manor Road, Bourne Avenue and Fairfield Road in 1881, while the Wyndham Park estate were being built. After 1900, housing branched south of the cathedral to Aylesway Road, along Downton Road and up the hill at Bouvery Avenue. North of Endless Street, the Bellevue Estate filled the gap to the Wyndham Estate, and the Vises Road continued with Bedford and Palmer Roads, and on and on. Then, out of the Girt War of 1418, the local authority come more into house building, starting with the Macklin Estate up the Vises Road of 1920, then a continuation of the Pembroke Park Estate, then the Waters Road and Butts Estates by Castle Road in 1924 and 1929, and the Wainalong Road Estate around 1930. My grandparents moved from a tiny place in the Friary to a new house with a copper, gas lighting and proper bedrooms up there in Kelsey Road. Many of these estates were built in response to perceived need, or raised as I said on speculation. But up the Castle Road were an estate of houses which were built for a different reason, and which can tell a story of desperate measures in a local institution. Out of the Girt War, the Salisbury Firmary were in dire straits, the buildings were in need of repairs, equipment were out of date, and fatally perhaps, so were the finances. A report at that time noted that besides the inefficient old-style wards with their lack of heat and light, there were no maternity ward, no ears, nose and throat ward, no pathology department, no sterilisation facility, only the barest corners for venereal diseases, for x-ray, for orthopaedics, for ophthalmology, and a scandalous state of accommodation for nurses and ward maids, which, despite the Victoria Nurses' Home of 1900, were pretty much on a par with when the place were founded in the 18th century. So poor, in fact, they were unable to keep staff there at all. It weren't possible to expand on that little cornered in three acre site, not properly, and the argument in favour of building anew were obvious. In September of 1921, the Butts Farm estate were bought from the church commissioners for just over £5,000, a considerate price as it would be for a new hospital. 
Plans were drawn up for a new establishment on the latest medical lines, efficient, practical, future-proof, to be built on 78 acres of farmland, just next to the Castle Road, opposite the Victoria Park. All that land right up towards the Scarpa Bishop Dam, where indeed convalescent patients might take the air. Now really, what could have been better? Only one thing stood in the way, money. And as the twenties went by, and no new hospital were being built, and no GERT campaign were being raised, so the governors of the firmary, time and again worried by their finances, parcelled off lethal beats of the Butts Farm estate, until towards 1930, an actual lands committee of these governors had sold off virtually the wool lot for housing. They roads of houses there, named for the old firmary wards of Radnor, Bartlett, Feversham, Atwood, Queensbury and Beatrice, these roads really should stand as reminders of a Salisbury hospital as should have been. Even so, the walled firmary had still to operate as backward as it were, and in 1930 a girt week long carnival were got out to raise funds for a small clinic for ENT work, the local authority having a girt waiting list for tonsillectomies and such like. A week of parades, concerts, singerations, football matches, massed bands, competitions, shows and a water gala followed, presided over by Miss Gwendolyn Wilkinson of Noyal House as the Queen. The girtest carnival I reckon that city have ever held, and it succeeded. The little addition to the walled infirmary were done and thereby the plans for a new hospital were more or less buried. And yet, barely five years later, Dick Wald Hospital were asking for some £85,000 to structurally rearrange, amend and vastly add to the buildings already cramped on Dick tight little site. They got the money too! Just think, if only they had asked for thick money for their new Butts Farm Hospital ten years before. It makes e wonder what were really going on with they their governors that they missed thick chance.